Hey everybody, it's me Fadi and welcome to Fadi Aquarium channel. Today I'm speaking about one of my favorite LPS coral, Guriopora or flower pot coral. I'll talk about lightning and flow requirements, their placement in the aquarium, feeding and propagation of these corals. But first, big thanks for Mr. Saltwater Tank, Mark Callahan and saltwateraquarium.com for this t-shirt. Now let's talk about guns. Gunyopora have large polyps that can greatly extend themselves, forming long swaying tubes with flower-like tentacles at their tips. Not far along, Gunyopora was considered an impossible coral to keep, as they usually die in aquariums after a few months. Recently, we are having better success with these sensitive corals due to advances in aquarium equipment and sourcing relatively easier to keep Gunyopora species. Gunyopora and Elifiopora are both called sometimes flower pot corals. They can be easily recognized by the number of tentacles at the end of each arm. Goni typically have 24, while Eliviopora only has 12. Eliviopora is considered easier to keep than Goniopora. These corals are not for the beginner reef hobbyists, and even the experienced should carefully consider it before committing to such a demanding species. With good care, good water quality, stable parameters, and regular feeding, Goniopora can thrive and survive in our aquariums. This green goni with relatively shorter, smaller, and more compact polyps is the oldest goniopora colony in my tank. I had it for more than 5 years from my older tank before upgrading to my 180 gallon tank. Most species require medium light intensity from 75 to 125 par. Low to moderate alternating flow is best. You can determine flow by the movement of the polyps, they should gently move with the current back and forth. Gunyopora should be given plenty of space to ensure that its long flowing tentacles are not damaged by rocks or other corals. Gunyoporas are aggressive and can sting and kill other nearby corals. I have a guni garden that is placed on the bottom corner of the tank so it gets moderate light and flow. Maintain and balance calcium, magnesium, pH and alkalinity. The best way to supplement these elements is a calcium reactor or dosing. I talked about dosing all these elements in how to build and maintain reef tank series in episodes from 16 to 18. For nitrate and phosphate, Gunyopora can tolerate a little higher values than SPS corals, nitrate levels between 10 to 20 ppm, and phosphate levels around 0.05 ppm. Regular feeding is the key to keep these sensitive corals. Baby brine shrimp, rotifers, oyster eggs, and other small meaty suspension foods work best. Spot feeding is the best way to feed Goniopora. I target feed my Goniopora's with Goniopower. Goniopower is a blend of dry zooplankton developed by Goniopora expert Justin Credible for feeding Goniopora, Eliviopora, and other corals. It's a powder based food made up of all the nutrients that Goniopora needs. To feed the Gonies, I mix some Goniopower with water to make it a thick paste, turn off pumps and wave makers. Then gently target feed the Goniopora with food using a turkey baster. Keep the baster away from the colony for a few inches and try your best not to touch and disturb the coral. Then gently distribute the food all over the coral. You need to be very gentle so the polyps don't close. The polyp should be extended while feeding and only the tentacle are closed and holding food to bring it to the mouth. To fry Gunipora, you'll need to have a wet band saw. The wet band saw will make clean cuts, prevent the corals from heating, and cut the frag quickly to minimize stress. Glue the frags and leave them in the same system for a while until they are fully recovered. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and see you soon in the next video.